Welcome back to another video. My name is Michael. I am the founder of Buffalo Performance and Analysis, where we combine sports science, strength and conditioning, and sports performance to give coaches the tools necessary to develop the next generation of elite athletes. In this video, we're going to be doing a technical breakdown of one of my clients as he performs a heavy uh, power clean. So to do that, I am utilizing Canovia and their software, as well as some of the tools within Canovia to make that possible. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and play this clip. It's running at about half speed, so I'm going to let it run through twice before we break it down piece by piece. To give you a little bit of information, this is one of my clients, Gabe. He is a sophomore in high school. He plays football and basketball, as well as a little bit of track and field. He doesn't have regular weight room availability at his school. Uh, and so we've been working with him for about nine weeks with his power clean technique. The first thing I want to take a look at is as he's pulling the bar off the ground, he does a pretty good job at moving the barbell and his hips at the same time. A lot of the time what we'll see is a sharp rise of the hips before the barbell has even broken contact with the floor. Uh, the big cue that I like to use is bar moves first. So by saying, telling an athlete bar moves first, they know that they cannot move their hips first before the bar, bar moves, that they have to move the bar first. Pretty self-explanatory. Another cue that I'll kind of couple that with is to push the earth away. A lot of times athletes will try to revert it into a deadlift, um, but I kind of tell them to leg press into the earth. And so as we progress through this first phase of the pool, we see that he does a, a decent job at doing that, um, but he does have a little bit of excessive knee extension. That's not a big issue right around here, but as we continue on, we'll see <clears throat> that his knees are extending a little bit too much. And how that shows itself is, if we stop it at this frame right here, is there is a large gap between his knee and the barbell. So what that means is that hit the, the weight is out in front of him. It is pulling him forward. And as we're going to see, I've drawn this green line on the video. Um, when Gabe enters the catch, we'll be able to see if he jumps forward, backwards, or if he's uneven with his feet. Um, but as we can see here, we can predict based off of this gap right here, that when Gabe enters the catch, that he will jump forward because of this forward bar or forward center of mass, putting the weight more on his toes now. What this is allowing him to do is put himself in a position to achieve triple extension in a couple frames from now. So as he's pushing his knees forward, now he's in a great position to jump from or to cue the athlete to jump from. So as we continue on right here, he's starting to push his knees forward more and forward more and forward more. And as he goes up, he's jumping, he's jumping, he's jumping. Right here at 2.77 seconds, we were able to utilize Kenovia's bar tracking to let us know that this is where his peak barbell velocity occurred and he reached a max velocity of 0.74 meters per second. This is a great look at triple extension. He's up on his toes, he's flexed hard. He has a slight bend at the knees, but not too much. But we could essentially draw a line from his ankle, through his knee, through his hip, all the way up to his shoulder. And that's fantastic. One issue, however, is the bar path. In elite, power cleans uh, we want to see the bar path after it passes the knees to actually travel back towards the center of mass or the center of foot pressure however in this instance we see that the the bar path continues to travel forward away from Gabriel and that's going to be an issue again like I said because as he enters the catch he's going to be forced to jump forward as we continue through we see that his feet leave the ground, and when his feet meet, make contact with the ground again, 
we see that in fact that he has jumped forward. Now, maybe only about four or six inches forward, but it's still a slight jump forward. And that's because of that extensive knee extension at the beginning and because he allowed the bar to travel a little bit far in front of him. We're gonna continue ahead until we get to the catch position. Now, like I said, Gabriel is a beginner with the power clean. He's only been doing it for about nine weeks up until this point. And so when he makes the catch, ideally we want to see his elbows pointed forward more. What we see here is his elbows are pointed down, which could be an issue of either wrist or shoulder flexibility or of even thoracic mobility, not being able to comfortably bring his elbows up and let the bar rest across the front rack position. So that's something that we can definitely work on with stretching and cueing throughout the lifts. A big thing I want to point out here is that while Gabriel does make the catch here, he continues to descend down into the squat for about a second. So he catches the bar on his shoulders, but then the weight of the bar brings him down, 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 down before he's able to squat up with it. Now, while this isn't bad with a a regular clean when we're trying to develop a power clean what we want to see is the athlete catch it in this quarter squat position right here again with the elbows pointed forward more and then stand up from this quarter or half squat position that's going to help develop that reversal strength and that explosive strength that athletes really need that will be able to transfer to the, the field or their court so one thing that we'll definitely be working on with Gabe is some submaximal loads to make sure that he can catch it in that quarter squat and then stand up with it. A lot of people have concerns about whether or not to implement the Olympic lifts as part of their training program. For me personally, my experiences have led me to believe that the Olympic lifts are a great way and a great measure of athletic performance in the field and as long as you're coupling that with sports specific drills and exercises it will have a great transfer and a great carryover to the field the power the power clean the power snatch all the olympic lifts are going to help develop inter and intramuscular coordination they're going to develop explosive power <clears throat> reversal strength absolute strength as well as the, strip, the, the stretch reflex and hip extension and triple extension. Again, this isn't the end all be all, but it is a great way to teach these athletes how to coordinate their body around the barbell as opposed to the barbell around their body and couple that with, like I said, exercises that are sports specific, it will have a great carryover to the field. I wanna take us back to Gabriel's peak barbell velocity. By utilizing velocity-based training, we're able to see what kind of carryover this will have to the field. By using velocity zones, we understand that 0.74 meters per second puts this load as a strength speed lift. So if we wanted to go with more of a speed strength lift, we would strip some of that weight off and tell Gabriel to move it as quickly as possible. And that's gonna have a little bit more carryover to the speed side of things. But as we see here with 0.74 meters per second, that's really developing a lot of explosive power for Gabriel, which is great because he often plays O-line, D-line, and a little bit of linebacker at his school. So this video took a breakdown of Gabriel's power clean technique. This is one of the many services that Buffalo Performance and Analysis offers to coaches and individuals. If you or your team are looking to get to the next level, please feel free to reach out and we can help you get to that level. Thanks.